going to be, you know, most likely two rate cuts this year instead of three. But that, again, if you looked at, like, for instance, like, okay, so everyone watching, right? If if the market was expecting three in, instead of two, we would have seen the 10-year yield shoot to the upside, right? Because it would be, okay, well, the Fed's going to keep rates higher for longer. But if we go to the 10-year yield, look at this. The 10-year yield has actually rolled over as well and come down. So we know that just two, re two rate cuts versus three, that's not the key here. There's something else. The only other thing I can think of is if we look at oil, right? If we go to the oil chart, let me bring up oil here real quick. Okay, oil is was ripping higher today. Now it's come down a little bit, but interestingly yeah. enough, if you look at when the market began to sell off, right? Right here around just after the noon, right? I mean, excuse me, when oil started to rally, it was just after 12 p.m. Eastern time, right? And we saw it slowly going up and then accelerate to the upside. Now look at this. If we go back to the S&P 500 here, okay? And we go in and let me zoom in on this chart. Look at when, I'm gonna put my line right here. Look at when, I well, can't see it because that's in the way, but that's okay. Look, look at when we started to see this right there, same right after noon. So you can see as oil was upticking, the markets were slowly, and then oil starts taking off and the market started to collapse to the downside. The, the thinking I have here is that oil moving higher, what does it mean? It means inflation, right? So higher oil translates into higher prices because again, it's gasoline and, and oil goes into plastics. I mean, it's everything. So again, I think you have this inverse relationship developing with um, the stock market and oil now. And that is a big, big thing here if oil is gonna continue to go up. So oil again, this is a big deal to watch this oil chart and watch the S&P reverse or go inversely to it. You've been trading for over 20 years, and I listen to you um, mm -hmm. when you're talking to our members who are trading along, and I, I know you watch things, you know, just kind of fall, but you also said, okay, I, I've never seen this really happen without a bounce. I'm waiting for the bounce. Yeah, and I have seen it, but it's been so long. Okay. I mean, we're talking about past crises like COVID drop in the okay. markets like that this is this is Something the type extreme. of thing like like generally and this is where day tra day trading this afternoon was tough for me because because again okay you're falling you're falling you're falling you know you get a certain amount down you start to come into support let's say right here right and you're like okay well you should get at least a little check back so you go along here and it just kept going and going and going that's very unusual in addition i want to just show you this so at the bottom of my screen we have the volume right so so look at the volume today look and then look at the volume just accelerate. And again, this tells me that this selling, number one, it caused some fear, but number two, it's not just, again, mom and pops dumping. There's something bigger going on here. So again, I don't know specifically if it's just the oil. Is it the expectations for the jobs report tomorrow? Is it two rate cuts instead of three? It could be a little of everything, or it could be something we don't even know about. There could be something else going on here that smart money knows that we're not privy to just yet. I know it, we'll find out soon enough, but if the yeah. jobs report tomorrow mm -hmm. is not what is expected, right. what do you see coming? Do you so, see this continuing or not necessarily? So, so if the jobs report is strong tomorrow, I would assume that would help oil go up, meaning the economy is strong, so there's a lot of demand for oil, and it would push oil up, and I would expect the markets to have another down day. If the jobs report comes in weak, I think the markets could have a big bounce back. Assuming it's not ridiculous, like as long as it's just a little weak, the markets just want to know that the economy's weakening a little bit, yeah. and then that's good. This is, by the way, this is the volatility. This is the VIX today. The VIX was down, 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 and then the VIX went from 13 to almost 17. Huge move, and the VIX is the volatility index. This is what they call the fear gauge. So you can see the fear started okay. to spike dramatically in yeah. the afternoon. And again, this is this is some wild stuff here in terms of, of just the price action in the afternoon. And then what's interesting here as well is that gold today was actually down, right? I mean, so you'd think the fear trade would be, would be gold would go up. But again, gold's been on such a rip higher that it just was due for some profit taking as well. And then I know you're going to talk to Paul in a minute about Bitcoin. Bitcoin actually is doing really well today compared. Yeah, now, so far. Now, the only thing I would say is that sometimes historically Bitcoin and crypto is like a day later in terms of reaction, okay. reacting. So just watch for that. Let's see what happens. But so far, Bitcoin is doing really, really well. Okay, yeah. we got to get to silver. Mm -hmm. Now, I did see the headlines yesterday, and we're getting yeah. to it, of course, because our viewers told us that's what you guys want to see. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't realize this. People are, you know, watching this. It's uh, more popular yeah. uh, than I realized, and it has definitely popped. So yeah. So so the biggest thing here is silver confirmed finally. Finally, it confirmed the breakout. Again, you could see it pierced the line. 
and we'll see if we can get that up. No, nope, they're gonna want me to just click that again and that. But yeah, we can see right here, right? We got the break, the pierce here, the close above, but no confirmation. There's your close above, there's your obvious confirmation. I don't chase these things. Like, you're not gonna catch me buying up here after this type of run. That's just not gonna happen. What I do do though, is I say, okay, well, let's wait for a retrace to the scene of the crime. And then I might consider buying silver there on that pullback into that now support. It was resistance, right? We kept on hammering, hammering. When yep. resistance breaks, it then becomes support on the way down. And that's where I buy it. Now, is it possible people will be like, oh, well, you know, you might miss the trade. Who cares? There's always another, another trade. One. I've <laughs> never been like, oh darn, I missed the last trade in the world and there's never another one. You know what I'm saying? Thank so goodness. you just have yes. to put it in that perspective and then you, you're like, all right, if it comes back to my level, I'll buy it. If not, let it go. Let it do what it wants to do. Okay, one so. more. That's mm -hmm. a request. Uh, Coco. Oh, yeah. So this looked like it actually put in a top. Finally. Yeah, you covered this this morning on you. the game plan as yeah. well. Yeah, and I didn't actually um, see. So it looks like it bounced a little bit today. But you can see that we had our first two down days since it looks like February. Uh, and they were pretty significant down days. I wish I had more technicals to go on on this chart because to be honest, when you're in uncharted territory where you have no history, like we have no history of Coco being up here at these levels. So you kind of just have to just look at it and say, okay, number one, we know it's extended. We saw some negative divergences on the RSI. And now you're starting to get two consecutive down days. So it looks like a top. There's no guarantees, but certainly to me, it's it's a ridiculous move up. I mean, this was this is case in point. You could even argue that this has been the leading indicator for the markets, right? As long as Coco's been going up, the stock market's been going up, just like NVIDIA. And NVIDIA is starting to crack. I just want to remind people of one more thing. You know, about a week, week and a half ago, what did we say about the S&P 500, right? Oh, my God, that's like one of the next. <laughs> you said this. Yeah, I you said, said, I said we've confirmed. Through. We've confirmed to the downside. The probabilities are now favoring the downside. Well, that's one of the nastiest candles you're ever going to see. Like that is. That's an engulfing, is that right? That is engulfing. Yeah, it's like to the 10x. That's the 100x engulfing candle. Like that is nasty Next to right the there. Now, again, doesn't mean, by the way, it doesn't mean we're going to just go like this. We might go like this, but ultimately, again, this just reinforces the negativity of the break of this channel and confirmation, and we see the results. So many people are still willing to buy the dip. I'm not willing to buy the dip because I know it confirmed to the downside and the probabilities are now favoring the downside. Okay, something to keep in mind. Did we cover everything you wanted to go over right now? I think I so. <laughs> <laughs> You're exhausted, I know. There's That's a all lot, good. lot happening. It keeps you on your toes and obviously you love what you do. Yeah, so do. Um, let's get to crypto. We do have Verified Trader and uh, Crypto Expert. Paul Sampson here. Let's it. start with Bitcoin. But again, I do want to ask you to cover what our viewers have asked. And yep. I appreciate that, you guys. You mentioned on our YouTube channel that you wanted to see XRP. And Cardano was another one. Perfect. So Bitcoin, though, so far, crypto, what I had seen was doing all right. Is, yeah, it's... Uh, it's unless it's, unless I'm seeing something It's having a little right uh, reaction here. Okay. But yeah, very, quite the of opposite course. today as compared to the stock market. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, yesterday we were looking at where Bitcoin kind of, you know, started off the week, right? I got a, a noted here. The weekly open seventy one thousand four hundred. We took a tumble, and what I was looking at was the you know now that we're in, in April, you can start to view some of the previous range data that we have. And so I was looking at March's range, all right, pulled with the uh, fixed range volume profile tool, all right. That's going to show you all the volume, the value area, the highest area known as the point of control, all the good stuff. Um, and I've sectioned it off here. And basically, all we did was we ran it down to the low. We had a local gold pocket down in this region as well. So no matter what, you know, no matter if we're just going to roll over in this region or not, it was definitely an area where I was looking for a, a bounce, a long position. Uh, I talked about coming back up to the previous all-time high once again, uh, which we did here. Uh, and this was actually a really nice trade. I actually issued this in the Trader's Edge service at verifiedinvesting.com. Uh, and what happened was we had the, the low of day over here. We swept the low. We had a nice little range. And then what we did here was from this low to this high, you just came back down, another local gold pocket bounce. And I was looking at this previous week low right here. So that's the area we wanted to get back above. Uh, and then we ran it up and we actually took profits on that trade. So we took it from basically the daily low here, uh, cashed out right there, which was a, a good decision, it looks like, at the moment. I, it, when we started the show, <laughs> yep. it was up. And it was up quite a bit. It still is up for the day. I mean, we started off day. here today. So, I mean, we're still, you know, in the green, to, so to speak, on Bitcoin, probably okay. compared to the others. Uh, it just had a really, you know, decent move. This was like, you know, 3 or 4%. Uh, to the upside, and now we're just getting a little bit of a pullback. So, uh, honestly, for Bitcoin, you know, I know that we're looking at the stocks kind of having a pullback, and the correlation usually is there. 
Um, for me, just looking technically at Bitcoin, I still actually anticipate that we actually run it back up a little bit here. Okay. You know, obviously things can change, but you know, at the moment I'm just looking for probably some consolidation in this region, uh, get above that previous all-time high once again, uh, and then we have a nice couple of targets back up at that uh, 71,000 area there for Bitcoin. So. All right. Where are you going next? Is it XRP? Uh, yeah. Let's take a look at to... XRP. It's usually a fan favorite, and we'll go there. All right. So XRP. Right. This is this is actually the oldest, if, if I'm not mistaken. I, I need to actually look this up and be sure. Um, pretty sure this is the oldest altcoin out there, even even okay. older than Ethereum. Right. This was like born in like 2013, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm sure there may be others, but as far as like all the majors, like XRP is like the one that's been around. Right. Been around so, for a bit. Okay. Had a really explosive move back in like 2017. Uh, I actually witnessed it like 100x in three weeks, uh, which was pretty incredible to see. It topped out at like three dollars, and basically it's almost become a joke because it's it's pretty flat a lot of the times. We had a really big impulse move back here. I think that was uh, last summer. It went from like 40 cents to a dollar just about, and like when the SEC you know dropped or. There was, an, there was a lawsuit, maybe potentially still going on there, but it's uh, they had some news come out about the SEC like losing that, you know, against it, and it just had a huge rally to the upside, and still just ranging sideways. Uh, so for me, I've been actually building a pretty good position around 50 cents over the last couple months here. Um, still really just ranging; it's really nothing to kind of ride home about at the moment. We did have a little uh, swing up earlier to once again that volume point of control. So that's actually the yeah. highest area of uh, transactions in this whole entire area. So uh, just price is just kind of magnetized to that region off and on. It's almost like a mean reversion. Constantly going to that. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, overall, I'm just waiting to see when we get an actual breakout and I'm targeting actually up to a dollar. we got a macro gold pocket up in this area uh, and then even up to like 111. It's not the sexiest target for everybody that's been holding <laughs> that for so long, but for me, as just as looking at it as an a any other asset, that's almost 100% move, um, and that's what I would be looking for when we actually do break this range. Otherwise, it's I'm just picking up as much as I can around that 50 cent region. If it goes lower, I guess we have to reevaluate. But okay, gold pocket. Can you sum that up? We did have somebody yep. ask, um, and I sure can't sum it up. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'll. Uh, but I know you use that often. Yeah, it's let something me... you pay a close attention to sure. with the charts. I'll, uh, I'll I'll show you here on Bitcoin, right, is a good example. So I'll even just delete this one. And whoop, there we go. All right. So just a and this is tidbit. trading view, right, that we use um, for all the charts, if anyone's interested. It as is. Well. Yeah. So all right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll, I'll pull it. So uh, it's it's a setting that you'll have to set up if you want to just show the the golden pocket. And what it is, is that based on Fibonacci retracement or even expansion, it's uh, the 61.8 to 65 percent level. And what you're doing is you're pulling that from a specific place on the chart. So you could do it from, you know, the entire chart, whatever. I'm going to go ahead and show okay. an example of uh, just like this high right here, and I'll pull it down to the low that we've got locally. So the tool right here is up at the top, Fibonacci retracement. It's usually actually over there. This is my favorites uh, toolbar here. Uh, and then we just kind of come over here, get it from the high, drag it over. And you can actually see that's where we actually topped today, right? So you get of this whole move down, we retraced basically 61.8 to 65 percent. Not perfect. It had a couple other things like right there, uh, but that's where you got the reversal from. So is it the end all be all? No, but it's just a good. It's just a good. Uh, retracement zone to keep in mind. Retracement um, zone. Yeah, okay. just adding confluence and things of that nature. So that's what um, the gold pocket is. Exactly. And, okay. Uh, like I said, you'll just have to if you want it to look like that. There's certain settings you'll have to go into. Um, but yeah, otherwise that's pretty simple outlook on it there. Yeah, and I know Trading View has um, a lot of. Um, Oh, help and, and different uh, sessions to show you how to use all the different tools as there well. There is, yep, yep, there is. Um, yeah, and then Cardano, I just want to go ahead and touch on that. You brought that one up here. Uh, so we actually, very similar to XRP, you know, we had this huge range, but we actually got the breakout, right? So uh, for this, you know, we've gotten all the squiggles. And uh, <laughs> you got the really nice breakout. We got a back test. So similar to if you were looking for a trend line, um, you know, a head and shoulders, they fall in wedge, you get that breakout. And then Gareth refers to it as retracement to the scene of the crime. Uh, essentially, that's that, right? You get the back test of support or okay. of, the, of your pattern area. Uh, this is where traders are going to come in and enter once again. That's not trying to chase that pump. Uh, then you get the next move up. So we, is that where you kind of see it headed next? So yeah, I, I could. Uh, at this point, you know, you kind of have to anticipate we might actually come back down to that region once again. Uh, but otherwise, I'm actually looking for a move up to this 88 cents region, uh, 114 potentially over time. But yeah, we're pretty much just kind of ranging around now on top of this old range here. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I'd be looking for. And Cardano, uh, similar to similar to XRP, not as old. Definitely been around for a long time, and it's probably a fan favorite of, of people that have been in crypto for years and years. 
It was a 100x mover uh, in 2020 to 2021 in that one year time frame. Okay. Um, so with that being said, though, a lot of times you'll get a, a huge move like that. And just like XRP, you will have a huge <laughs> time of, of, of basically like distribution after just that. So, out. yeah, so, it, it may not get all the way back up to something like that sometime soon. But once again, you can still trade the, the, the plays into rim or just if you're looking as a long term investor, you know, understanding the next levels above us. Do you swing trade these? For yes. the most part? Uh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, I generally I swing, like any altcoins for me, I'm not like day trading them. I'll yeah. only really day trade heavily. Uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Okay. Those are the two I go in for. I look for a specific setup. So today I have a, a long-term portfolio holding of Ethereum. I don't have any Bitcoin at the moment. Um, and then altcoins, otherwise I'll just look for, like I said, the XRP trade. I've been sitting in for quite a while on 50 cents looking for a dollar. Uh, Cardano, you know, looking to get into this, I'd be targeting up to these areas. And what I do is I just start to take profits and I look for pullbacks and kind of keep the trend going. So, okay. and then day trading in the middle to, I don't know, keep the lights on, I guess. So one more <laughs> thing, um, somebody wanted to know exactly where they can go for your Tuesday show. Is there anything I, I, unverified? I saw that, yeah. So yeah, okay. for, for the Tuesday, the verified, we, we call it different show names, but everything that we do is on the ver on this channel, the Verified Investing okay. uh, channel here on YouTube. It's just, I do a show called, uh, titled basically The Crypto Insider. Uh, it's just on here on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m., Saturdays at, at 1 p.m. Uh, but yeah, everything's on here. Yeah, it's just, uh, okay. we just have different titles to keep it uh, separated a yeah, little bit. Yeah, verifiedinvesting.com, and then of course our YouTube channel as well. Paul, thank you so much, oh, we appreciate it. I want to thank Gareth as well. Gareth has a show every morning at 9 a.m. right here on the Verified Investing YouTube channel. It's called The Game Plan, and it is right before the market opening. So thank you so much for joining us on Training the Close on this Thursday. That is the end of the week for us. We will be back on Monday. Hope you will join us then. Make it a great rest of the week.